-hmm. and Mr. Greg Wrench made a video showing how they actually figure out if the engine is bad or not. Oh, okay. It's more than, it's more than just looking at the uh, the trouble code. That's like, good. Uh, they were there saying. should be more than that. So let me bring up that video. Oh my God! One line mechanic tips is here. What's up, one line mechanic tips? That's, that is hey. that's the goat right there. He is one of the best Dodge mechanics in the whole freaking country. Awesome. Test. We will put ZRW40 engine wheel into this. I do have everything hooked up. This is PicoScope and GM software with PicoScope right there. It's attached with a special adapter that has a knock sensor on the bottom. Oh, nice. So, yo, they put um, they put mm -hmm. a knock sensor. They have like a special knock sensor that yep. they uh, attach to the engine. Let's see. So, Greg, Mr. Greg Rent says absolutely, yeah. So they have a they put a special sensor on there, and there's a harness that is attached to the GM scan tool, like a laptop scan tool. Right. And let me show you. They're going to. They are going to. There's full setup to do within the PicoScope software, which we'll get into that software in just a moment. But what it does is rev it up to 2,000 RPM. So they rev it up to 2,000 RPM. It's like going through like a, mm -hmm. like a test. Like this is the type of test we used to do at Common sometime. Yep. And once it's happening, you can record the PicoScope data. You can go down here and it'll start recording. And we want to get 20 to 40 seconds of PicoScope data. So they're going to get about 20 to 40 seconds worth of data. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to have the computer look at that data. And that's sustaining a certain RPM? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So they must be looking for noise, right? Yeah, they're they're looking to, to capture this uh, this scope data. Mm -hmm. yep. They're using a, a PicoScope. Right, but that scope so, is... So what that's doing, right, is it's collecting basically vibration in the engine and you're looking yeah. for anything that's outside of a certain tolerance is what that is doing for guys that might not understand yes uh mr greg Ren says knock sensor to pico scope to laptop mm -hmm. records and then we submit it to see if it passes or fails all mm -hmm. of the ones i have done have passed all right okay. cool mr greg wrench have you gotten to do any uh complete engine recalls yet or have you just uh passed everything so have, has anything failed yeah, that's kind of a neat tool that the uh, engineers at GM came up with. Uh, it's a good way of being able to try and understand what's going on inside of the engine without having to actually open the engine up and take a look at the bearings yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so for all the guys, for all the mechanics out there who think that engineers hate them so much, uh, <laughs> the engineers are actually trying to look to find ways to make your job easier sometimes. Yeah, exactly. They're there to help out, and most time they don't hate you. It's just... A nature of cost savings and trying to package as much stuff as possible in a small area and of course you can point out good and bad examples of engineers maybe not excelling at their job or doing a really good job but uh for the most part they're they want to do a good job they want to make a good product yeah see so so yeah so he's sending this over it looks like so there it is i'm surprised they make the text send that data in uh typically I mean, we would know, you'd know this too, right? We've done warranty claims and stuff on the common side of things where we're just looking at pass-fail criteria. So oh, they're going to basically Here put is. that data in. They're going to look for predetermined set of data points. If it's inside of those tolerances, it'd be good. If it's outside of those tolerances, it would fail. So I'm surprised they just don't have that built into the software where the text can just give oh. it a green light. It looks like light. it passed. So yeah, it, it looks like passed there, but I thought he said they had to send it in. So they got to submit it. Well, he, I guess he submitted it and they, oh, maybe they submit it just on the FS. <laughs> maybe that is part of the software. They just, after it's been recorded, it submits it automatically and yeah. comes back. But yeah, basically you're just looking for it being inside of the, the pr certain parameters, a certain amount of noise is acceptable. Yeah. They probably want to see all these graphs too, to, to kind of see if there's any trends, any different directions. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Greg Wrench says, I have done a lot of engines for this engine failure prior to the recall. Several years of this issue, and GM just recently came out with this recall. Okay. Interesting. So, um, Mr. Greg Rents, about how long does it take you to do the recall? Like, how long does it take you on average? Because I uh, have an article from GM Authority. They're saying it takes like 18.2 to 18.6 labor hours. 
Yeah, that's so that's like that's a, uh, a little over two days. Yeah, Mr. Greg Wrench, how long does it take you? I bet it takes four hours for you, right? <laughs> I bet he's less than 18 if he's done a handful of them. Um, I guarantee you, he's you, you could, I bet you could beat the time, but I mean, you don't, mm -hmm. as long as you do it right, it doesn't matter, it matter how long it takes. Exactly, but the first time is always the slowest on anything that you do for the most part. And then you like oh, learn tricks. You already know all the tools you need. That's half the battle. Most times when you're doing something for the first time, you don't know what tools you're going to need. But yeah. after you've done something a few times, like you know all these little tricks, you know all the tools you're going to need, you can just lay everything right out. See, engine replacement time. I cannot comment. Would hate for them to lower the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do watch the that. show, so definitely don't say anything. Every... <laughs> I think all the GM executives watch the show. Yeah, I know Mary Barron is always commenting. Miss Mary, I hope she watches one day. She is the best CEO in the country for mm -hmm. cars. Thank you, Mr. Greg Wrench. Everybody check out his channel. It is pretty cool. We don't have a, I haven't seen a lot of technicians that work on mostly GM stuff. Mm -hmm. So he is at about a thousand subscribers. Let's get that up. We need to learn this information. Yeah, it's super cool. So look at us. We got uh and what a better place that than to get this information from other than directly from the source like Mr. Greg Wrench. So yeah, yeah, thank you. So yeah, thanks for coming, uh Mr. Greg Wrench. And I hope to see you again soon or next yeah. Sunday maybe, or anytime. Just come through anytime. Anytime. We are GM fans around here. So yeah. All right. well, Hence thanks, what's man. behind me. <laughs> yeah, that's all that's what we do. That's what we do. Exactly. All right. And we also, I don't know if uh, Online Mechanic Tips is here. You guys, if you're not on Online Mechanic Tips channel, you are missing out. He's got a whole bunch of videos. I've been a fan of his for a while. Mm -hmm. I am honored for him to be here. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. he, this guy, Dane, you know about uh, PT Cruisers? Have you ever worked on one of those? I've never worked on one, no. They are really hard to work on. Online Mechanic Tips does those for breakfast. Like he, really? he knows all about the PT Cruiser, all about the 3.6 liter Pentastar oil uh, filter housing, mm -hmm. uh, the Hemis. He can fix everything. He's like a, a Dodge Master Tech. That's awesome.